Sirius XM. And now, the Opie and Anthony Show. Got a legend outside the studio. Wow. I've um, definitely seen this guy. Rich Little. Wow. My God, take a seat, sir. Are you? God, I just came what a pleasure. Makeup. What pleasure. a pleasure. <laughs> you look great. You look wonderful, you sir. You really do. You look fantastic. Almost alive. <laughs> 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 Sorry, we're running a little we're on late. the air too. So it's good. yeah, yeah. We just start the show and let it rip, you know. Oh, right on, onward, <laughs> forward, wagons ho. That's a gentleman. Look how he's dressed. Yeah. I know. Well, always, always. We could take a. We we could learn from this man. I remember your performances uh, years ago. Always dressed uh, what in a tux. Right? No, not you always have a tux on. No, no, that's Dean Martin. Well, I, I remember watching those too. But Dean uh, slept in a tux. It, it was a, yeah, well, always he, you know in the gutter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> always very well dressed. I, I see though the, the lapels a little thinner than back uh, in the old days. Where oh yeah, they were. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, I loved those suits. With those long sideburns and those big collars. <laughs> yes, they yeah. were out to your shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I remember, my God, uh, years ago, all the great variety shows and uh, specials, and of course, uh, on The Tonight Show, the great Rich Little. How many Amazing. Tonight Shows did you do? Um, I was uh, hosting it, I think, about uh, 10 or 12 times. Now, and, and that's just hosting it, or those are appearances? Too? Uh, appearances, probably 20. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow, yeah. That's, Johnny uh, treated you well? Uh, I never met Johnny. No, <laughs> <laughs> he did treat me well, although I didn't get to know him. I don't that's think that's what everyone did. says. Yeah, yeah. They say that Henry Bushkin has a book that's coming out. His old lawyer, and I'm reading it now. And, and Carson seemed like he was a very elusive guy. Uh, yeah, he was a very private guy, uh, uh, not too talkative off the air, and hmm. uh, he was polite, but uh, you, you didn't socialize with him. You never saw him before the show, went to his dressing room or anything like that. But he drove his own car to to NBC every hmm. day. Must have been a shock when he was driving home at night and people looked over. Right. That's Johnny Carson. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> must have caused a few accidents. <laughs> <laughs> you when uh, when years ago when uh, you were on uh, like all those uh, many specials and and whatnot variety shows and stuff there was also uh, Frank Gorshin back then yeah was an, another uh, impressionist uh, so much different than you though uh, well was yeah he had a different style a totally different style uh, w w did you feel competitive with him at all well no no I didn't I think he did a little bit but uh, mm. he came before me but. Uh, Frank, uh, you know, did the uh, uh, the routine of uh, announcing who he's going to do, turning around, fixing his hair. <laughs> it was the one, and, uh, yes, yes. Getting the face ready and then it, turning back. The Me, I just, I just rattle them off. I would do Howard Cosell, then I'd do George Burns, then I'd do John Wayne, and I'd do Kurt Douglas. <laughs> You know, I mean, <laughs> no I would just around, yeah. go from one to another uh, very great. quickly. I've always done that. <laughs> and and was it something that from a kid you just uh, were, were a, a little minor bird? Yeah, I started imitating teachers at school. Mm -hmm. That's how I started. And Cracking I knew I had classroom, something yeah. going for me because it wasn't long before the teachers were charging a two drink minimum <laughs> and a cover charge. <laughs> now, was it a happy childhood or was it this, this the product of trying to dissociate from something awful happening? Well, I, w I was born in Canada. I'm a Canadian, a Canuck, you know. So and, it had to be happy. Everyone's happy you know, up there. I uh, came down to the States in 19... Wow, this dates me. Uh, 1964, I think, or 63, to do the Judy Garland show. That oh, wow. That was my first TV show, yeah. But I mean, doing the impressions when you were a kid, what makes you realize you can do... Because that's what... Impressionists are always amazing to me. Because there has to be such a mindset to just get in and become other people yeah. and pick up on their mannerisms and... Well, you know, people used to introduce me as the world's greatest impressionist. And I used to say, no, I think the world's greatest impressionist was Van Gogh, mm -hmm. Cezanne, <laughs> you know, Matisse. They were good impressionists. What do you consider yourself? Even an more impersonator. A, an impersonator. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, growing up, you, you realized you were pretty good at doing this. How did you... 
make it a career. As soon as I started to make money, I thought, okay, uh, this thing seriously. Now, how did that happen? How do you how do you go? Well, I I was uh, after I imitated my teachers, which uh, there was no money in that. Mm. Um, <laughs> I started imitating local politicians and the mayor of Ottawa, and then uh, I did uh, the prime minister, and then I started doing some movie stars, and then. Uh, you know, organizations would hire me for shows like you know, the Shriners, Knights of Columbus, and I would go and do 15 minutes, a little stand up, and they'd give me five or ten dollars. And uh, I thought that was pretty good. Being a teenager. Five or yeah, ten yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. And then make the big move down to uh, the United States for the yeah. Judy Garland show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how, did like... that, how did that go, that first uh, TV Well, performance? Mel Torme got me on the show. Oh, really? Mel Torme. He said, Richie, Richmond, the golden fog, the golden fog, chestnuts roasting on an open <laughs> fire. He was great. Mel wow. was. He, he was a great movie buff. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. He always watched movies in the buff. But he, <laughs> oh, uh, see, I, I, I felt for that one. On little. But um, no, we did watch movies. Uh, we did uh, some television together in Toronto, and uh, we would watch movies all night long. We'd go down in, into the basement of the Holiday Inn. He put up a big bed sheet, and we'd watch movies all night long. He was a movie fanatic. Really? Oh, boy, did he know his yeah. movies. And uh, that's how we became friendly. And then after we did a TV show in Toronto together, he knew I did all these uh, different voices. I was doing Lloyd Bridges. I was doing Raymond Burr. You know, I, I, I was doing a lot of people nobody else did. And he mm. uh, took a tape of all my voices and uh, played it for Judy Garland. Wow, that's pretty nice of him. And uh, to see if he could get me on the Garland show. Mm -hmm. And uh, Judy was not impressed. Uh-oh. Really? However, <laughs> when I did James Mason, uh, that's when she was impressed because she had done A Star is Born with James with Mason. James, yeah, and she yeah. loved James Mason. So when I did my James Mason, of course, <laughs> and I, when I went into that impression of that... That voice. <laughs> I was the one that got my own the Judy Collins show. <laughs> I remember you know, wow. hearing that one years ago, man. Always. I, you and, really sound like James Mason. Yeah, that's, wow. that's, that's fantastic. I used to do a speech from A Star is Born. That was the one uh, I put on the tape. Of Listen course, to yeah. me, Esther. A career is a curious thing. Talent isn't always enough. You need a sense of timing. An eye for seeing the turning point and recognizing the big chance when it comes along and grabbing it. <laughs> <laughs> that was the speech I put on the tape. How did, and that put you, you over with uh, Judy Garland, yeah. Daryl Hammond is a great impressionist, too, impersonator. Yes, he is. And Daryl said something weird. He sees voices, in, and well, Daryl's a psychopath, but he sees things <laughs> in color, he said. There's a weird way he sees what voices. What does he do, eat crayons? <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't know. He has a bit of a history of smoking crack, so that could have been it. <laughs> but, but he, he would give us—he would give us a color. We go, you know, when you're doing Clinton, what color? And uh, he said like orange. Yeah, he and sees he knew. It weirdly. Like, yeah. how do you see Clint, a voice? Clinton's probably the easiest yeah. impression for anybody to do. Yeah, you know yeah, that, yeah. Bill Clinton. Because Even Bono all you did. Is it put a frog yesterday. in your, yeah, in your throat. Yeah, you know, Kermit the Frog, probably. <laughs> uh, but you know, Bill Clinton is just you know that that kind of static in his voice. Yeah, yeah, you kind of. Yeah, a little gritty in the back of the uh, throat. Can you see Bill Clinton going? I think I'll I'll clear my throat just a second. <clears throat> there, that's my. <laughs> <laughs> Bono was uh, on the news this morning uh, from YouTube showing uh, doing his impression of Clinton. I guess they had gotten together for some meeting, and Clinton right. was late to the meeting, so Bono just started doing this spot-on impression of uh, Bill Clinton. So I guess you're right. Everybody can do a, a Bill Clinton impression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is there anyone you couldn't do that you wanted to do? Is there one that you could just uh, never get? I would like to do Angelie Jolie. I would like to do her. <laughs> uh, I'd never be lonely. <laughs> uh, oh, there's a lot of people I can't do. You know, they say rich little man of a thousand voices, which is kind of corny. It's a, <laughs> it's really, you know, Long Cheney was man of a thousand faces, and then they said man of a thousand voices. Voices. Mm. I don't do a thousand voices. I do about two hundred. Which was one that you, you you worked on and worked on and worked on and just felt like ah, I gotta let it go. Was there one that you? Just, oh yeah, which there, one? There were many. Uh, oh, let's see. Uh, Mike Douglas. Uh, mm. When I was on the Mike Douglas show years ago, I, I could never get him down. Uh, um, the, 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 there there were voices that other people did so well that I, I just lost interest. Mm -hmm. you know I mean? 
Uh, Frank Gorshin did Kurt Douglas and Burt Lancaster and Richard Woodmark. I never able to do him. Uh, a lot of the older stars, you know. The older stars are better to do because they were larger than life and they were identifiable. You yeah, know, yeah. You do George Clooney. If I did a, a spot-on impression right. of George Clooney, which I can't do, uh, I don't think it would get any reaction at all. Right. right. There was this over-the-top right. dramatic delivery with a lot of the older actors right. that you could really kind of uh, fix on and, and, and play it that way. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever notice it was easy for um, or easier if you had heard someone do an impression of somebody? Oh, yeah. And then pick up on that. I, oh, yeah. I, I had noticed that over the years. If you try to do an impression of somebody and you can't quite get it and then you hear someone else do it, you go, that's right. Oh. So now you can you f find that little niche. Yeah. Uh, to do. Yeah. 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 You can steal a voice from somebody. <laughs> else. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. you uh, you were um, right at the forefront when uh, like Richard Nixon. Uh, was in office, and you were yeah. you were the guy at that point well, uh, to do Nixon. David impressions. Fry was too. Yeah, but he was more of the look like and, and he, a caricature. The, yeah, a caricature. Uh, yeah, I, I tried to do him uh, more realistically uh, mm -hmm. and not make him a cartoon. Uh, I once did Nixon in front of him. Yeah, yeah. How did how did that go? <laughs> uh, I was invited to a. Uh, a garden party at San Clemente. I was in my early 20s. The Western White House. And there were a lot of celebrities <laughs> there. And when I arrived, I thought, gosh, my act is here. And, uh, <laughs> and I've never met my act before. There were John Wayne was there and wow. George Burns, Jack Benny, Glenn Ford, Glenn Campbell. You name it. They were all there. And Debbie Reynolds. Oh, I've never forgiven her for this. She grabbed my hand, pulled me around the swimming pool, threw me to the back of Richard Nixon and yelled out, Mr. President, Rich Little is going to do you. <laughs> oh, he man. thought I was going to shoot him. <laughs> and he turned around in total f fear and uh, looked at me, and I went into my impression of Richard Nixon, and he didn't know who I was doing. Oh, no. Oh, I was going, uh, Mr. President, I, let me make this perfectly clear. I, I am delighted to be here today. And... Uh, he looked at me, and then he turned to his wife, Pat, and he said, why is this young man speaking in this strange way? <laughs> <laughs> he did not know I was doing him. Oh, the whole time I was doing him, and, oh, the celebrities were gagging. I did mean, you just, were you sweating? Oh, I was sweating. <laughs> George Burns came up to me later and said, I was so nervous, I ate a flower. <laughs> <laughs> and John Wayne said, somebody get a rope. <laughs> you know, but um, said that. I, I, did a, I, I did a good impression of Nixon, though, yes, I, yes. because when I left that party, Pat, his wife, went with me. <laughs> I couldn't get rid of her for two weeks. <laughs> wow, so you, you basically, uh, you, your, your impression of Nixon, you bombed at to Nixon doing Nixon. Oh, in yeah. front of a bunch of celebrities. Uh, yeah. Well, Nixon oh. had no sense of humor. Apparently, yeah. yeah the yeah, tapes you know. kind of reveal that. A man, <laughs> a man who wore the same blue suit for over 40 years and never took the hanger out of it? How funny can he be? You know? <laughs> That's a great comedian's oh, yeah. horror story, just doing the, the voice right, to the right president. The and president. Not, uh, how did Reagan like oh, your impression? Reagan was much different. Reagan just was hysterical. I mean, I, I kept pinching myself. I'm talking to the president of the United States and he's telling me jokes. And he's doing impressions for me. Yeah, he was apparently a real hoot. You know, oh, he, uh, he just loved humor. His sense of humor is uh, legendary. I remember uh, he did his Jimmy Stewart for me. Uh, you know, which was the standard Jimmy Stewart, wah, wah, wah. You know? <laughs> and then he did John Wayne. And that was okay. But then he did Truman Capote for me. In, wow. in, in the Lincoln Room one one night after a state dinner, he went into his Truman Capote, uh, <laughs> Reagan, Reagan did. And he sounded a little like Truman Capote like this, you see. And I thought it was pretty good. And then he said, Rich, uh, I, I don't have a line. Uh, <laughs> oh, I, I don't know what to say. As, as Truman Capote, have you got a good joke I could use? And I said, as a matter of fact, I do. Well, I would appreciate that if you would give me that, because I, I don't know what to say when I do my Truman. So I oh. gave him this joke, and he got a Secret Service man, wrote it on his back, the whole <laughs> joke out. And um, the joke was this. 
I said, this is Truman Capote. You know, a lot of people think that I wrote in cold blood, but that's not true. No, actually, I wrote in ink. <laughs> so Reagan just thought that was hysterical, wrote it down on the back of the Secret Service man, and then he said to me, I can't wait to try that out on Gorbachev. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought about that after, after uh, and I, I'd give anything to see Reagan doing Truman Capote for <laughs> yeah, Gorbachev. Right. Huh? Could you imagine him doing, I wrote in cold blood, you know, and Gorbachev going, that is a tough fit. You know, he starts doing his, he's talking he starts about. doing his act. You know? Well, the next thing you know, the wall came down because he just thought Reagan was out of his mind. He's like, look, drop the wall. He's going to kill us off. <laughs> so maybe you helped. Yeah. One time uh, when I went to the White House uh, for a, a, a little tea they were having and I was late and I was Ooh, kicking myself rock. and I ran down the hall of the White House to, to the Lincoln Room and there was Reagan out in front talking to the press and he looked up and he said, Rich, thank God you're here. I'm starved and I'm stuck with these press people. And he said, you do me better than I do. You finish this press conference. <laughs> I said, what? You you finish this press conference. I'm going for a cucumber sandwich. And he left. And he left me with the press. And I went into my rig. <laughs> wow. And they were asking me questions. It was the time of the Grenada thing. Mm -hmm. And they said, Mr. President, what do you think of Grenada? Well, I think it's the it's the best song that Buddy Greco ever recorded. <laughs> you know, and then they were asking me other things. And I was answering as Reagan. And he was peeking around the corner. Oh, really? Yeah. And listening to me and 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 just laughing his head off. Yeah, he you know? apparently they really. Were, they were asking me questions, uh, you know, things like, uh, "What are you going to do for the little guy in America?" And I'd say, "Well, get him a little woman." You know? <laughs> so, I mean, silly, stupid answers. You do, know? You, do you see how the world has changed now, and you couldn't do that now without oh, the press God, throwing no. you under the bus? And they, oh yeah, it's just everything has just gotten. You couldn't do that today. No, no, no. you wouldn't even get close to the president. <laughs> What do you no. not like about the business now, about show business now? Because you've seen quite a, uh, an arc. Well, yeah, I, th I think it, uh, it, it's certainly a lot bluer than it is. Yeah. I mean, uh, a lot of the young comics today want the shock value. Oh, you know? yeah. So, so they, they use uh, four-letter words when they don't have to, right. you know. I mean, all those Dean Martin celebrity roasts, uh, they took shots of people, but they, they were never blue, right. you know. Um, but you know, the ones today are really vicious. Uh, the <laughs> the language is are. unbelievable. You know, I, it's like doing a friar's roast. I've done some of those in the past. Uh -huh. too. Those friar's harsh. roasts were blue, but they were clever though. Yeah. 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 They were clever. Yeah. I yeah. loved watching those, uh, Dean Martin roasts. Uh, yeah. The Dean Martin celebrity roasts are out now. Is that yeah. what you're promoting? Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm God. going around the country out promoting now. the Dean Martin celebrity <laughs> roast because I'm, Probably the only person still living. <laughs> <laughs> so Jesus. I was only twelve oh when I God. did them, but uh, uh, they're 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 um, they're out on DVD, and um, and I think they're going to be a big seller because people tell me all the time, you know, when there's nothing on TV, we always get out a wow. old Dean Martin roast and watch it. Now they're on DVD, twelve complete roasts. Six oh, wow. DVDs with uh, three hours of extras. Who were some of the uh, celebrities being roasted? And the uh, roasted people on this uh, CD. You know, they did uh, 54 roasts. The, wow, wow. 50 wow. over about six years. But this is Johnny Carson, Lucille Ball, Don Rickles, Jimmy oh, Stewart, yeah. Bob Hope. Man, yeah, I, 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 I remember the Lucille Ball one was uh, oh, hilarious. Oh, yeah, well, my the, God. I thought the best one was uh, either Johnny Carson or Jimmy Stewart. Mm. How many of those were you a part of? Uh, well, I did uh, 52. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. And and I got... was in my 20s. I was terrified. Really? I mean, if you stand up in front, front of the likes of, you look on your right and you see George Burns, Jack Benny, Lucille Ball, Orson Welles, you know, and then you see Don Rickles, and then you see Dean Martin, you see Frank Sinatra, John Wayne. I mean, it's enough to... And you're the kid there. It's enough to make you just <laughs> have to keel over, you know, from wow. from sheer terror. You know? Did you wow. do poorly on any of them? Was there any of them that you look back on, you're like, oh, I kind of wish I could take that one out of the... 
Uh, yeah, there's a couple. I thought, <laughs> uh, I thought, well, you know, I can do that better today. You know, uh, but th- th- there are some that, uh, that surprised me. Like the, hmm. the Jimmy Stewart one was, was great fun to do because, uh, I showed Jimmy how to do himself <laughs> and we winged it. We didn't script right, it. Right. Yeah. I said, Jim, all you gotta do is just, 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 just stick out your hand like this and bend over and say, wow, just like that. <laughs> and, and Jim, Jim stuck out his hand and bent over and went, wow. I said, that sounds like a seal in heat for heaven's <laughs> sake. That is the worst Jimmy Stewart I've ever heard. Sit down. That's terrible. And it was a very funny. <laughs> that is funny. Very and he went with funny. it. He went with it. Did you, uh, did you, you did laugh in a few times, right? Yeah. 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 How yeah. was that um, behind the scenes? It always, uh, you always think there was a lot of, uh, yeah, chaos, perhaps some uh, illegalities going on. Uh, uh, yeah. 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 Um, a, a party, a party going on back there. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah everybody was very friendly. And the, the, the thing about laughing is, is that it, it was quick. Mm-hmm. You know, they did such short little sketches and um, everybody did it. Nixon yeah. was on it. Yeah, John, yeah. John Wayne was on one show I did where he played a rabbit. They had him dress up in a bunny costume. <laughs> it does seem that they were able to get people to do things they would never do anywhere else. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was a popular show. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I wasn't allowed to watch it, but I, I would sneak out of my room and kind of peek out of the, the bedroom door and watch it uh, until my father saw that we were peeking. And then, well, you know, back then I probably got a, a swat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, like Pavlov's dog, I watch it now and I wince in pain. <laughs> are you? Uh, do you do, are you still doing the next date? Rich has, by the way, for uh, for a show is uh, it's 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 called Jimmy Stewart and Friends, mm-hmm. starring you, and uh, it's November the tenth in Sydney, Ohio. So, if you're out there, I'm, I'm guessing tickets are available now. It's in the Sydney High School Auditorium. Wow. And um, is that where we, they got me going? <laughs> <laughs> Sydney, Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't, you don't like Mr. Little, do you? It no, was, it's on the uh, sheet. That, that, that was on the It was so cold. <laughs> it was so cold in Sydney, Ohio this morning. How cold uh, was it? <laughs> an exhibitionist came up to me and had to describe himself to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, that that'll, that'll be fun. Uh, uh, <laughs> that'll be fun. <laughs> I, I, that'll be fun. I, I just finished doing the Andy Williams Theater in Branson, Missouri. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. That was great fun. Yeah. Great fun. Beautiful are you, theater. Are you still out a lot, doing a lot of dates? Or do yeah. You, you know, well, you I've been doing the show on Jimmy Stewart and Friends. Okay. Uh, for the last four years, and really, uh, looks like we're going to bring it to Broadway. Wow. Oh, that's great. Good for Next you. year. Oh, wow. Wow. I didn't say we play it here, but I'm gonna, we're going <laughs> to yeah, bring it. Just here. bring it. Just bring it and leave it here. <laughs> well, richlittle.com is the, yes. the website for the dates. If you want anything you want to know about uh, a Rich or his, uh, and he's promoting the Dean Martin Celebrity Roast Collection, which is out now, six DVDs. Fantastic. And yeah. uh, the great Rich Little. Rich, thanks, thanks so, so much, much for coming so in. Man. What a You're great welcome. time. Good to see you. Great guys. time. Really come back yeah, and see us. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry I put makeup on for this show. <laughs> exactly. And when we talked about the Dean Martin Rose, I held up the uh, You did hold, the hold it up. I do like but, that you held it up. Yeah, I held it up so <laughs> you, could, right. you could hear it. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, guys. Thank right, you, Rich Little. Thanks so much. I want to begin this message. We'll be right back.